So we want to look at how the shuttle makes electricity. So we're going to go to the shuttle itself. And once we get into the shuttle, we're going to grab this hand. We're going to look at this overhead panel right here. And what is on this overhead panel, you can see, is the electricity. And when we click on that overhead panel for the electricity, we're going to come down and look at the schematics right here and we'll look at the electrical system. Now here on the electrical system, we see we have the power reactant storage and distribution system. Basically, hydrogen and oxygen, H2 and O2, that we take up in the outer space with us on the shuttle. Now we take some hydrogen, we take some oxygen, this goes into a fuel cell. And from the combination of making of hydrogen and oxygen, we create DC power, which is then goes into a battery si or a system uh, that is distributed to the shuttle itself. But also, as you see, one of the, the things that comes off of this fuel cell from making electricity is H2O or water by taking the hydrogen and oxygen. And then also we see that we tap off some of the oxygen to go into the cabin for the uh, astronauts to breathe. So all, we do two things at once. We create electricity and also create uh, things that we need for the environmental control system. Now we're going to look at how power is produced on the International Space Station. What we're going to do is click here, it says electrical power, and then go down to the functional diagram. Now here you can see uh, how we have a factory on the ground that produces electricity, goes to high tension wires that go next to your house to a transformer, which steps the power down so it can be used in your house. We have the same thing that's with the shuttle. The shuttle uses the sun for the solar panels or the photovoltaic modules, and that produces electricity. Then it is, goes to a secondary power conversion, steps the power down, just like this transformer, to all the devices that can be used within the International Space Station. And here you see the panels, and they are very large. You can see this is the International Space Station. And for the size of the International Space Station, they need two solar panels to power it. And what that power does is the power from the, from the solar panels is brought into the system and then is saved in these batteries. So what happens is when the, so when the International Space Station has sunlight, it is absorbing the electric or creating the electricity, saving that in the batteries. So when it's on the dark side of the Earth, when there is no sun, the, the station is charged from these batteries. Now next, I'd like to talk about the difference between having uh, solar panels and having a fuel cell, which works with oxygen and hydrogen, which you take with you. Now look at how big this is, the International Space Station. It is about a football field large. Now, if you look at that, you see that this is also about the size of a football field, the same as this part. Now, the great thing about the International Space Station is it stays in orbit, so it can always have its solar panels out. But if you are a space shuttle and you're launched into outer space and then come back and land on Earth, uh, you would have to have uh, basically solar panels twice the size of the space shuttle to power the space shuttle for its flight. Now, because of the size, it would not be able to go into outer space uh, every time. So that is why they use those fuel cells. They're compact enough and they're able to go up with the space. They were up to go up with the space shuttle and come down and land with the space shuttle.
here since the the spacecraft the international space station stays in outer space it can use the solar panels and doesn't need to use the uh the uh, electric uh fuel cells and if it did have those fuel cells you have to remember that you have to carry the hydrogen and the oxygen up to the international space station and that now they don't have to do that that oxygen can be used for the environmental systems and then the hydrogen that way uh, that payload can be taken off and things like food can be carried up to the international space station so well, let's say that you don't want to explore Mars, but you want to go further out. You want to go to Pluto. Now, the amount of sun that you have uh, on Earth is about a hundred times more than, say, if you were going to explore Pluto. In a, in a sense, then, if you took this type of a space station and wanted to have it go around Pluto, these photocells would have to be increased by a factor of 100 just to get the the amount of solar power to power this space station. So I want you to think about that. Imagine how long it would take to put get 100 more of these cells to put around into a spacecraft and then launch it out to Pluto. And so there, maybe a fuel cell might work, maybe not. Maybe they will need some kind of um, fusion or fission type power, nuclear power, to power that space station. And when you go that far into outer space.